sure that's what I want. And it's recording. So this is, let me see, what is this? The, the 26th of February, 2020. Wow, time flies, doesn't it? Time flies like an arrow, fruit flies like a banana. Somebody said that, I don't know. Anyhow, uh, I, this is the uh, second webinar for the use, uh, creating and using Blended Learning Classrooms course, which is put on by me, Matt Stevens, as an English language specialist in conjunction with Relo Bangkok. And um, I'm going to show you a bit about the course in a moment, but right now we've got Jane Shin here, who's just uh, turned up, and she's one of the participants in the course. How are you tonight, Jane? Good, I'm fine, thank you. Jane is in you? Taipei, which is really cool because it's the same time zone as me, which is in Malaysia. I'm in Penang, Malaysia. So that's a huge swath of territory that's all under one time zone. Anyway, and, and just over Thailand, where these courses started, is one hour earlier. So, and also, if you look at the map, you've also got like Cambodia, which is also I think one hour earlier, and they're a little bit to the toward your direction. So, toward my direction. Anyway, go figure. So anyhow, uh, okay. Well, I'm going to start a screen share in a moment, but right. But I mean, we're we're in the second week of the course. The first week was all about creating. Uh, well, basically, the course I should say it's about create, setting up blended learning environments, and so. Uh, the idea is that it's a three-week course. So the first week, I, I'm trying to get people used to the tools to use the course. And, and, my, and my approach is not to teach the tools. I mean, that would be kind of silly because you never know who the people are coming from, you know, what, what they know already. So at least in my opinion, it's kind of silly to try to teach them. So what I've done is I've, I gave some workshops in Thailand last month. And in these workshops, I set up... Um, I'll, I'll show it to you in a moment, but anyway, it's basically workshops2020.pbworks.com. And uh, I, in the workshops, I did about maybe 10 of them, and I um, showed people the, the tools. And so the workshops were at different lengths. So the longest was four hours, so and I set up four hours of workshops. And, um, and then I had also some other workshops on writing. You, mem you mentioned Memorize. That was one of the... Uh, one of the uh, workshops that was on writing. Mm -hmm. I can show it to you in a little bit if you want to see. Okay. But um, anyhow, the the all these workshops that I gave in the last part of January, I set up uh, for them some descriptions of all the tools that we're talking about. And so when these workshops started, the e-learning workshops started, um, I didn't I, I sort of referred people back to those workshops where I'd set up. I don't know how, how was that going for you? Are it's, you able to see? It's pretty clear. I but I was quite surprised that, um, to find the list very long, very long list of tools that you've used to create like blended learning, and it, it's amazing. Like it's like um, you need to learn so many different tools. Well, there are lots of different tools available. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's great to know the different ones, but um, I'm still mm -hmm. try, I still would like to um, try out the ones that in, you um, introduce us. Um, we work together, Jane and I. We work on something called Electronic Village Online Minecraft MOOC, EVO Minecraft MOOC, and the tools there are kind of similar. And well, the main tool that's similar is pbworks.com. Uh, and um, so I've been using that. That's actually my standby. In fact, I'm even finding that as I give these courses, it's mm -hmm. best if I set up the course in pbworks mm -hmm. and then copy that stuff into Schoology. So mm -hmm. you set up, you, you sort of use pbworks to uh, to set out, to storyboard sort of what you, you're planning to do and then mm -hmm. 
you you can copy that into Schoology. Whereas when I really started out, I really didn't know how Schoology worked. Believe it or not, a week ago I was struggling, um, mm-hmm. but I I, I just, just realized I had to read the manual, so I just kind of went at it and I I figured it out. It was it's quite simple actually. Once you read the manual, you can see how it all hit, hangs together. So Schoology is new for me, but Schoology mm-hmm. in a totally online environment like this mm-hmm. where we're doing the e-learning courses it's, it's quite important to have something that where you can interact with participants yes whereas in our evo minecraft MOOC course we're, we're actually going into minecraft and we're using discord and we're using different uh places to interact with each other yes. minecraft being the most important one uh-huh. and uh, and facebook Mm-hmm. But we never, we don't really have a center, you know, which is, which actually Schoology could serve, I think, as a center. We were thinking about MOOC at one time and looking at Google Classroom, this, but mm-hmm. having lost Google Plus Communities, which was our yeah. center, or it was yeah. a really nice center, actually. So we all suffered from that. We lost, uh, by all, I mean, other people who are using Google, Google Plus Communities. All these I know, people. it's like 395 people were members of our community. Yeah, and that's only one community, and I don't know how many how many communities were you a part of? Well, several. I know. Yeah, yeah. I had all of them. I had lots, lots of communities. I I was a part of them, and some of them were kind of interesting and sort of fringe. But uh, it was really nice to have them there. Uh, I mean, like in Google Glass and things like that. Uh, some, mm-hmm communities, which I really didn't interact with much, but still it was nice to be a part of them. Mm -hmm. And they all just disappeared. So I kind of wonder, you know, what's, you know, the, the, my, my Tesla EJ article just recently is about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you read it or have seen it, but it's about the disappearance of communities. Um, Anyhow, I I might uh, reference it somehow. I'll stick it in a chat or something like that. But, um, yeah, anyhow, uh, so what I'm trying to do in this course is to sort of model for people how they can set up their own, um, what I've sometimes I've called DIY LMS, which is do-it-yourself learning management systems. Mm-hmm. I've actually got some track record in writing about DIY LMS. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's kind of a, a thing I think I coined the term, but I was really kind of promoting it several years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, went to Turkey and gave some workshops and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's what I'm, the reason I call it DIY LMS is because it's not Blackboard. It's not, um, it can incorporate some of these tools, but uh-huh. it's something you set up yourself. And mm-hmm. Google Classrooms would count because Google Classrooms is a free site that you can use. Uh-huh. And, you know, so is for me, as long as it's free, that means you can you can set it up but it and and schoology is free mm-hmm. so and it, it's doing very well now Moodle is free also uh but Moodle is just a little bit more complicated have you worked with Moodle yourself yes yes, yes. Uh, last time we um took um dr Nellie Deutsch's uh, Moodle mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. teachers or like her mm-hmm. workshop yes yeah Technology for technology for teachers is that what it is? Technology. Mm-hmm. Oh, or, I, can, I, I should remember that. This is embarrassing. Uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I've taken the course too, and it's really great. And uh-huh. um, uh, integrating technology for teachers is that what it is? Mm-hmm. It for uh, it for t. I, it for elt or I, I'm I'm yeah. not sure. Okay. Well, anyway, I guess people could Google Nellie Deutsch and Moodle and they mm-hmm. could probably come on her course. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, and, and she's got a, uh, she's wonderful because uh, especially for EVO, you know, I've been doing a, a, a survey of, especially when Google plus um, uh, that, that was what the, the article that I wrote in the Tesla EJ just for the last issue mm-hmm. that re- really presages uh, a survey I'm doing more formally about what EVO has been using for the last 20 years. Oh, that's great. 
Yeah, it's really cool. And one yeah. thing I'm discovering is that uh, I, I kind of did it back 10 years just for this this last minute. I'm discovering that people are using Moodle, especially because of Nelly. Uh -huh. they're, using, they're using Moodle. About mm -hmm. half of the, the sessions are using Moodle now. I mean, mm -hmm. she's, she's really, when, when someone comes along and doesn't have a plan, she mm -hmm. says, well, why don't you just use Moodle? I'll, I'll put it up for you. Yes. And, she, and the nice thing about Moodle is it doesn't disappear like Google Plus Community. I know, yeah. So there because you are, yeah. Hosted by her. Yes, hosted by her, which really solves a problem yes. um, for people who want to use Moodle. Mm -hmm. uh, so, however, if you want to host your own Moodle because you're in Thailand, let's say, and you need to get, because your, your students are having to stay home because of the coronavirus, are you having yes. that problem in Taipei? Yep. Mm -hmm. Our school doesn't start until March 2nd. Yeah. Yeah, so lots of teachers are all of a sudden being told, uh, meet your students online. Stay home. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and so this, this uh, I, I hope that tea will come. Uh, uh, Arjun tea. Arjun means uh -huh. a very respectable term for a teacher. Uh -huh. So Arjun tea is what she calls herself on her Twitter feed. And uh, I, I think it's an earned term. Uh, she's a respected professor. Mm -hmm. And uh, she uh, has is in this position, and actually, I don't know. Did you see her the video that she put up? Yes, yes, uh -huh. I saw. That's uh -huh. why um, I um, I friended her on Facebook and also Twitter. Yeah, uh, because of her information, her video was really clear. Um, she said that this video goes out to her, all her students because um, they had to uh, stay at home and. So this is the way she she's gonna reach her students, and that's a great idea. Yeah, it, it it's happening in Taiwan too. We're promoting online learning mm -hmm. uh, because um, the government, the Ministry of Education, prolonged the winter break, and so all of a sudden, online learning is the buzzword. Like um, like online synchronous face to face, they're offering uh, Zoom free. Um, English courses, math courses, and Chinese courses online for junior high school students, senior high school students, and elementary school students. So, I, you know, this is a great time for blended learning course workshop like this. Yeah, certainly. And uh, well, T, uh, the, the the video she posted uh, here again. I'll bring up the site in a moment, but let's just talk for a second. But. Um, yeah, so her it really shows that here's someone who needs to learn something about blended learning fast, and she's doing quite a good job. And also, she interacts with her students in Twitter, which is was part of my course because here again, I've uh, I've, I've just um, uh, the, the, the workshops. Every workshop I did, I had a Twitter tag for each workshop, and I encouraged everyone at the workshop to take pictures. Uh, create artifacts, whatever I, I, I told, I asked them to create, we tried to tag it, and I got a lot of people to tag, and so uh, we've got basically a record of every workshop, which is really kind of cool. If you just go to the Twitter tags themselves, Twitter is very reliable for tags, and um, Facebook also, Instagram also, a lot of, not many people seem to be on Instagram, but uh, Twitter especially, um, has a photographic record. People are posting photos mainly and stuff like that. So Flickr used to work like that, but not that many people. I don't think. I've never, I've never used a Facebook tag before. Does it work the same as Twitter? As Twitter yeah, tag? yeah. If you're in Facebook, of course. The nice thing is that with Twitter, you can just search on the tag. You don't mm -hmm. have to be. You don't have to be logged on. So anybody can see. It's all public. You know, you can just search on the tag, and you can oh. you can bring it up. Uh -huh. And uh, with Facebook, on the other hand, you have to be in Facebook. So this is this is the only problem with Facebook, really, is the like with our EBOMC, uh, a Minecraft MOOC. Mm -hmm. Not everyone is in Facebook. Some of our, our yeah. biggest players are not in Facebook. So yep. their own reasons, but whatever. But anyway, you can't really organize there because uh, you're missing out some people. So you have to have these, these other spaces. I mean, they're in Discord. They're in uh, groups IO or Group wherever side. they are, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you, we, we're really, you know, you can't really rely on Facebook. I don't think to be, unless you just want to 
catch that subset of people. It's not a subset, it's a dominant set usually in your, mm -hmm. in your group, but you can't get everybody in Facebook and you can't just search it publicly. It doesn't search publicly. So, but, but when you're in Facebook, you can search on a tag and it'll come up. So EVO, My, EVO MC20, our tag for EVO Minecraft MOOC, is probably mm -hmm. pretty productive. You can go back to 19, 18, back to 15. You'll probably find some tags if they're still pulling them up. Okay. So the, you you can pick up things there. And uh, and uh, uh, I don't know if I, we haven't really tagged anything. The tag for this course is Blended 2020. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the only tag in Twitter is my own, where I uh, tagged... Uh, Arjun T's. Uh, T's. Yeah, yes. her, T's, I saw uh, the minute I. The yeah, minute so I you, saw your your sharing, I I I I was like, okay, I have to do this. Like, if yes, you, yes, why not? An example here, and you know, I can do it. Do you do it yeah. at conferences? When you go to conferences, do you use yes. the conference? Uh -huh. Yeah, I remember um, last year's. Um, Atlanta in Atlanta in Chicago mm -hmm. TESO conference we do tags yes. mm -hmm. yeah and uh, you know, there's lots of the TESOL is a huge conference so mm -hmm. surely you'll come up with some tags but for a lot of conferences they make a really nice record like the one in the cam TESOL just recently mm -hmm. Thai mm -hmm. TESOL uh, there was a there were a group of people in both of those because they're kind of uh, the same people might go to them but still, but and more people. But if you, those of us who are tweeting could uh, use the conference tag, and if you search on the conference tag, you'll pull up all these, you know, hour by hour. I was at this session. I was at that session. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, pictures. It's it just makes a great record, you know. So that's wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I'm I'm gonna use that for my courses. This there semester. you go. I'm try that. Ask my students to tag it. So yes. That I have a record of everything. Yeah. Yes, that's Cause right. Because uh -huh. um, I know, I know you guys use WhatsApp in Taiwan. We use um, Line. Or yeah. Japan in Japan. Thailand um, also. In, in, um, and so I, I, I post um, all of my photos like we took in 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 the classroom in our um, Line group. Mm -hmm. So it's set up only our group can you know view mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But now with Twitter tagging, I think I might just move it to Twitter so that it's available. Yeah, I encountered that at the workshops because uh, everyone told me they used Line, and uh, but I didn't really know. And I also asked them, well, okay, can we can we use Line for this? And they said, well, no, you have to be in Line, and you know, it's like Facebook, maybe. I mean, you mm -hmm. you've got to be in in it before you can search it. Yes. Yes. So yeah, I think Twitter tagging is a better idea. Well, yeah, tw Twitter tagging is available for everybody. Yeah. So it's it's a yeah it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and so you're working on something yourself, you said, for the course. Um, yeah, I'd like to um, finish the first assignment, and uh, you mentioned about uh, we, that we could create a website um, mm -hmm. or a video and. Um, anything. Um, T anything has already, a link. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> T <laughs> has already um, provided like video. So mm -hmm. I was thinking about um, starting the word, my WordPress um, blog because I have one, but I've never really used it. And I think it's time for me to figure out how to um, post on WordPress. And so I'm working on that. That's great. That's perfect. You know, so any kind of digital artifact to get uh -huh. people thinking and to, uh, also if you've got 40 people in this group, you can show each other mm -hmm. what the other person is doing and uh, model for one another. Modeling is uh, the, that, that was, uh, I was really emphasizing that in, uh, mm -hmm. in the workshops in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to do here. As I was explaining earlier, I'm not really trying to teach the tools. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just wouldn't know where to begin to try to say give a workshop on well today we're going to talk about Jing. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, but you have uh, everything ready on like uh, PB Works. Yeah, it's in like PB Works. 
lectures and I, I, I yeah. I, yeah, there's there are tutorials clear. there. Yeah, you can yes. go and check it out and, and figure it out. And if you if not, you can ask questions. You said you didn't um, you didn't use Yo Teach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to try though. I don't know what you said it's a back channeling um, Yeah. Did it? did you ever use today's yeah. meat? No, not today's, really. Yeah, today's meat was actually the best one. That was kind of, uh -huh. um, you just started an account at today's meat. Today's meat was just a cool tool. I could use it, uh, one one way I found it really useful, well, it actually, uh, Nick Peachy turned me on to it, I think. He gave a oh. talk somewhere and he, uh -huh. he told everyone to go to today's meat and go to this, go to his little chat room and uh -huh. all write in the back channel and he could uh -huh. look on the screen. He could take people's questions from the audience. Mm -hmm. It's uh, yo teach was, uh, uh, set up in Hong Kong, maybe Hong Kong Polytech. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Um, I recognize the URL, you know, where, where they've done it, but, um, because they used to have a good concordance there from the, about the mm -hmm. same URL. Mm -hmm. And, um, so, and, and, uh, I read about it in the, call is newsletter mm -hmm. and it's designed actually due to the demise of yo of, of today's meat today's meat went offline last year oh, okay. mm -hmm. i used to use it when uh where i used to teach we had a lot of attrition people got sick maybe they didn't feel like coming to work i don't know anywhere or there's a lot of mm -hmm. virus going around and you didn't yeah. Anyhow, people were often out and you had to cover their classes. So mm -hmm. if someone, if I had to cover someone's class, you're given a few minutes, you can, I would set up something for them on PB works or something. And I would put the URL in today's meet and I would go to the class and I would say, here, everyone go to this URL. And mm -hmm. that URL would give them the URL that they needed to go to, to do the materials. Mm -hmm. And so they would go there and do the materials and we'd have some sort of class interaction that didn't mm -hmm. end there because the next day the teacher would return and say, well, what did you do with my students? I said, well, it's all here in today's meet. Oh. And I got, people were kind of happy with that because it wasn't just a lost class. It was actually, uh -huh. they could follow up on what I did. So Yo Teach is, is designed on that principle. It means, hey, teacher, you know, I've got a question. Uh, uh -huh. You know, you're, I know you're in the middle of a lecture, but I'm just going to ask that question. And, and so when the teacher goes to Yo Teach and says, well, see if anybody has any questions, he can find the student's question. So, oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. It's, uh, today's Meet used to work like that. You could, uh -huh. it's just a place where, as long as someone's monitoring it. Uh -huh. um, I see. Yeah. So, uh, I should be monitoring it right now, actually, because I said I would monitor it during office hours and mm -hmm. webinars and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I do you know? I noticed that Google Slide also have that uh, similar sort of back channeling like uh, discussion. They do, yeah. Google Slides, Google Docs, all the Google uh, tools. Yeah. They have a uh, they have a chat. Uh huh. They have a chat. Yes. Yeah, I um, think that's yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing Google Slides, you could probably follow a chat. Uh, yes. Well, I hadn't, it, it never occurred to me to do I, that. I tried it last time, mm -hmm. and I think I, I think my only problem with that is um, when I'm like when I'm delivering the speech, nobody's like going through the the um, questions. So like you said, somebody has to monitor like monitor it, or mm -hmm. I I could. Come, you know, I had to go back and say, okay, wait a moment, let me see uh, who's got questions, and I, I would look at them. But yeah, so so I think Yo Teach is a good, a great idea. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try. It's nice because it's private. There, there's you have to set a password. So the password for us is blended, mm -hmm. and uh, and I, everywhere I put the URL, I put the password. So it's, but that's kind of a good thing because it does mean that the stuff that gets there is going to be, you know, uh, what you want to read. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas with Twitter, uh, you know, it's, well, as, if someone has your tag, they can, they can pollute it. 
Um, and Dana Boyd had this famous incident. Are you familiar with her incident? Do you know Dana Boyd? No. She wrote a book called, she, she, uh, the D and the B in Dana Boyd are lowercase. She always writes her name lowercase. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was the name of the book? Um, it's, um, it was about social media, young people, social media. Um, I can't remember offhand the name of the book. But mm -hmm. It's something, but anyway, very famous book. It was okay. her PhD research, I think. Uh -huh. But she was giving a talk. She was quite well known, and she was giving a talk, and she put a, she had a Twitter feed that people could comment on. And she was giving the talk, and the Twitter feed was going on in the background on the screen behind her, and people started laughing in the audience. And she, she lost the audience, and it was very famous because it was – uh, and the reason she lost it was because people were making jokes in the Twitter feed about oh, no. her talking and people were, people were kind of reading the Twitter feed and, oh no! but, but she confronted it. She, um, she analyzed it and she put, she put up in her blog, what, how it happened, what happened, uh, you know, so it was supposed for her more data, but, um, yeah, anyway, so, uh, that's, uh, Kind of what you know. That's it. when it's always going on Twitter, uh, and it happens to be too public. Then mm -hmm. um, one of the small dangers. Yep. But anyway, for your your back channel, there's nobody using Yo Teach uh, mm -hmm. in EVO Minecraft Mook. Only Heike uh, left so us a note. So, oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at the right at the very beginning, she said, "Oh, this is a neat tool," and then that was it. But uh, if people don't need it, it's okay. But I mean, there's, there are a lot of other channels. But it's something to bring up in a blended learning environment because if you, you know, if you if you get if you can show your students how uh, it's something they can use, then it's mm -hmm. a channel that they can use to connect with, whether it's in the middle of a class or if it's asynchronous in the middle of the night, whatever. Mm -hmm. Another place we can check to see. Uh, but Schoology is pretty good because um, it gives alerts. So for the teacher, that I always get alerts. Maybe I could just bring that up. I'll just uh, oh, that share. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. This is a Zoom screen right now, but uh, where is your teach? Here we go. So, oh. so would it be? Can I use it as the like a off like um, asynchronous office hour? something that my students could leave me questions or if they have yes well you could you can use it any way you want it's just basically uh -huh. a chat room where uh, your students can respond so uh, you set it up you set your own up so everyone has one let's mm -hmm. see if I go over to the this is the uh, blended learning oh, this is week two mm -hmm. so this is a this is the workshops 2020 dot com web page. Mm -hmm. I presume you can see this, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Okay. So um so on the uh, workshop if you go to workshops twenty twenty dot com, you have a sidebar over here. So uh these are the these are the um the workshops I gave. You mentioned memorize. Memorize was over here I think. Uh, so if you were more interested in how I used Memorize, you could click on this one. That's the one of the writing workshops. I give two writing workshops. And all of my uh, PV works, one nice thing I like about PV works is you always get a, a, um, a table of contents. So it, here's Memorize right here. So what, what I did with them in this one, I, I gave... Uh, I worked with uh, Appointment and Samra. Are you familiar with that Somerset Mom short story? No. Very short. Well, you can find out, out all about it here. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's basically I was using Tom Cobb's Lexical Tutor. Are you familiar uh -huh. with that? Uh -huh. Yes, I am. Okay. So you can take any text you want. I just said, okay, let's, you know, for fun in the workshop, let's just get appointment in Samra. So mm -hmm. all these are uh, having to do with uh, appointment in Samra. There's a video mm -hmm. made, which is really mm -hmm. cute. This mm -hmm. is the entire story, uh -huh. the original that Somerset mom wrote. Uh -huh. That's the short story. It's basically mm -hmm. about a, a uh, servant. He sent a servant to the market and the servant went to the market to get him some things. 
and somebody jostled him and he turned and he saw it was death that jostled him. So this is, this is death here in the picture here. So in the video, she becomes very eerie. So she jostled him and he saw it was death. And so he went back to his master and he said, master, lend me a horse. Uh, I will, I will escape my fate, and uh, I'm going to take this uh, horse to Samra. I'm going to ride to Samra. And the master gave him a horse. The master says, okay. Uh, he went down to the market, and he found death in the market. And he said, why did you bother my servant? She said, well, I was, why did you make a, a threatening gesture to my servant? She said, it wasn't a threatening gesture I made to your servant. It was a start of surprise because I had an appointment tonight with him in Samara. So it's a cute story and written in, you know, it's very short. So I just used that in, uh, to, to use the complete lexical tutor on some of the, the uh, things there. That's some of the vocabulary, you know, it sort of tease out the vocabulary for the, um, what you, you're there for you know, on this, what, what mm -hmm. the, the, the lists that Paul Nation set up, what, what are those called? Um, general service list. General service list. That's right. So we divided this, the words in the story out to the general service list lists. We found that using <coughs> that, uh, we <coughs> made several exercises through um, for uh, using the complete lexical tutor. And then I showed how you could take those words that you identified and you could, if that's your vocabulary, you could set them up and memorize and make a memorize game. So oh, oh. if you want to play the game, you could, there it is right there. Mm -hmm. So uh, well, the, the nice thing about the game is it's, um, it's, it really captivates the students because it has all the elements of gamification. Basically it gives them lots of points. They like to play it for the points. I'm not sure what they're learning. <clears throat> it's like this means that and so if if they see that then they choose this mm -hmm. it tries to teach them that this and that are connected uh -huh. and um, if that has something to do with a test you're going to give them or if, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if they learn it so that when they go out into the real world they can actually learn it but it, it teaches them this means that so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they really like to play the game. Mm -hmm. So it's similar to quiz, Quizlet. Yes, that's right. Okay. It is. Yeah, yeah. Similar to Quizlet, except mm -hmm. Quizlet is more an exercise mm -hmm. thing, and Memorize is really set up in a gamified environment. Oh, okay. The students really like to play it. So I could, and it tracks the students. So I could tell my students at times when I saw they were getting hard to manage, I could just say, mm -hmm. okay, let's play Memorize. And I want each of you to get uh, 3,000 points now to the end of the period. And uh -huh. then I would pull them up on the scoreboard. And some people criticize this. They say that yeah, but my students were beyond criticism. And they, uh, they just love to go after those points. And oh. they competed. And then when they reached 3,000 points, they'd say, okay, enough. You can go into your iPad. You can play around on videos, whatever you want to do. And... Uh, so it was something that, that gave me uh, some uh, record that they had done something in the course and it gave them, it really seemed, they seemed to enjoy it and um, it trained them for taking tests. Mm -hmm. which, but it was just kind of, it's not something you want to base your course around, but as a part of a course, it's, it's kind of nice. That's really nice. It's really nice how you... Um screen captured and uh, created the tutorial for all of us to you know, yeah. follow. This is yeah, really I mean, I, to tell you frankly, you know, with this e-learning course, I didn't sit down and conceive it all beforehand. I didn't have time for one thing. Uh, but as I'm in the course, I can see what is needed and I'll create those things. And uh, the same in the workshops. So in the workshops, I... Uh, found things that, I, as I went to one workshop, I said, oh, this didn't work so well. I'll set this up better for the next one. And so this course developed over the all those workshops for two weeks. Uh, so when I saw that uh, people were having trouble, I was having trouble explaining something, I'd just make a, 
the tutorial for them for the next one. And then, uh, then, and that's how it all developed, which mm -hmm. is a good way to develop things, especially, I mean, you know, it's nice if you have that opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. And in the courses that I teach also, uh, where I was working, I was also able to set up this kind of thing in the same way. So after mm -hmm. you know, over time, if you, second or third time you've taught the same course, you have all these nice materials all set up, mm -hmm. which um, it's a good way to work. Okay. But anyway, back on the sidebar over here, this mm -hmm. is the course uh, at the top of the sidebar. You can see the learning how to create and use blended learning environments. Mm -hmm. so if you click over there, there it is. It comes up. Same sidebar is here. Um, there's some basic information about the course, but you can also see week one, week two, week three. So week three, I haven't really set up yet. Let's embarrass myself here. There's not no, much there. So nothing, nothing there yet. So It'll you're going to talk about week two, right? Week Digital two. Digital storytelling. Yeah. Or week one, if you want to, uh, to go back into that. But yeah, in week two, I just kind of set this up today. Or I, actually over the past couple of days. Mm -hmm. But... Um, uh, I put in something about Twitter. Mm -hmm. uh, th these are the searches you can do on the workshops that I did. So if you just grab one, let's see if there's grab one here. Um, these are all, uh, what do you call them? They're the latest Twitter feeds. When you search on a, a, uh, a tag in Twitter, like mm -hmm. this one right here, Mm -hmm. When you search on a tag in Twitter, uh, it pulls up the top Twitter feeds. But if you force it, if you click on latest, and then you that's the link you get. So I've set all these to go up to the latest. So these are things that people did during that. Uh, if somebody set up an Etherpad, we can wow, look at Wow, that's great. <clears throat> it's all wow, pictures, wonderful. Yeah, pictures people took at that on that particular day. That's at uh, Chiang Rai. Uh -huh. Rajabat University, I think that's for teachers. Uh -huh. Teachers, uh -huh. so people crowdsourced in the, uh -huh. uh, you know, they they took pictures and we we put them all up. And if I oh. asked them to make a creation, um, they put that up as well. So, oh, that's great. So that that's uh, I'm not sure if I'm going okay. I'm not sure if that went uh, went out to the. If my students are not on Twitter, I'll ask them to please. <laughs> It, it works really nice. It's nice. And, uh, and for week two, I want people to start using the tags. And as I ask people to do the course, like for example, when you do your digital, uh, if you're doing week one, it's a digital poster. Mm -hmm. And since you give it a tag, if you give it that tag, you'll, uh, it will, aggregate and just under digital posters. And if mm -hmm. you are working on digital stories, you can use that tag. Okay. I don't know if that, do you think that's too complicated? Because mm -hmm. also we'll also have this tag, which collects everything. Well, no, just key in both and it'll be in both, right? Yeah, if you do, if you use both, then you can separate out everything that's blended learning you can separate the digital stories and the di digital posters. Uh -huh. I don't know. I've, when I do this with real students in some of my courses, if it gets too complicated, they just kind of blow it off. But anyway, so on digital storytelling, mm -hmm. uh, somebody uh, at the bottom of this wiki, let me see, there's Noura Dean in uh, mm -hmm. Morocco. Mm -hmm. He left me a note. Mm -hmm. He said, oh. he, he left a comment. So he said, uh, I wonder if you can, uh, are there any just documents to read or links to visit? And so uh, I found uh, an article he could read. I thought maybe he was looking for something like that. So I put that in, uh, I just got that actually as I was sitting down to start this workshop. Uh -huh. So I created, a, I Googled it and I found some other things that people could look at. Mm -hmm. But I suppose anybody can Google it and find some things. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, here's an, a video on seven elements of digital storytelling. Later mm -hmm. on, I mm -hmm. found out uh, if you Google storytelling ideas, here's one that says there's uh, there are ten elements. So mm -hmm. okay, seven, ten. I don't know. Anyway, it's nice to know some elements of digital storytelling. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with this uh, video of the Iranian short film? No. A two-minute film. It's a nice little film. It, you don't need to know Farsi to, but but some things you could do with it. it, it it's just a model. It's just uh -huh. two minutes of film that that narrates a story and follows those uh, those seven elements. Mm -hmm. And then I've got in my plenary that I gave at Thai Tisol, I gave an example of someone who created a digital story. Mm -hmm. uh, She's a non-native speaker of English. She does a very good job, mm -hmm. uh, almost flawless, except you can tell it's a non-native speaker. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, and she's talking about her mother. Mm -hmm. That's a nice topic for many people. Mm -hmm. And then this one is kind of neat. It's two videos. I think it's trying to sell a um, a platform for use for making digital stories mm -hmm. it shows you how it's set up in the how you set up the platform and you get your videos together and you organize them in the platform mm -hmm. and then the result which is just a minute and 16 seconds oh. and it's about the a lady trying to play the cajo which is a, a cajo which is a thing you pop, 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 pop. it's kind of like a you know you, you hold it between your knees and you you keep a rhythm on it and you accompany someone else who's playing an instrument or singing and it's a really neat story and the 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 video that shows how she made it is not important because of the tool she used but important because of the process she followed she storyboarded and she gets her videos together and she puts them together so there are things there that are instructive for making a one minute and a very effective digital mm -hmm. story about how she gets to grips with the Tahoe mm -hmm. and then I've also got uh, someone else made a PowerPoint wants to show people that actually made this video to show oh. people I set up PowerPoint animations to make uh -huh. digital stories she oh. shows some examples and she shows how you kind of move the objects around on the screen. She's using clip art to make objects. Oh, and okay. Also cartoons. There are lots of cartoon sites. Mm -hmm. I just Googled a few uh, tools. Here's one that has seven tools. These tools came up. Uh, when uh, I don't know if you know Richard Byrne. Do you know Richard Byrne? No. Australian guy? He, no. He's been active in... Uh, ed tech for a long time you know mm -hmm. trying to tell teachers how they can uh do things so he he has uh i think he he, he mentioned adobe spark mm -hmm. book creator and we video have you heard of we video no but i've heard of adobe spark in fact mm -hmm. I, i've just downloaded on my app okay yeah so it'd be nice if you could respond to one of our uh discussions about mm -hmm. How what you feel the affordances of that are. So if we, mm -hmm. we get people commenting on some of these videos, uh, some of these tools, mm -hmm. we might be able to mm -hmm. ourselves pick some out that we could look at. But we video mm -hmm. seems to, to stand out. For one thing, mm -hmm. there's um, in the, uh, the tools for making videos, I think it's up here. They have a blog. Uh -huh. uh, where did I find it? Up here, maybe? Uh -huh. oh, it's one of these. Here it is. No, yeah. Uh -huh. no, I've lost it. Okay, I don't know. Anyway, they have a blog, and those the blog maybe it's down later in some ideas. Mm -hmm. But in any event, there mm -hmm. uh, lots of uh, Richard Byrne. Uh, the the nice thing about his uh, blog post here is he's actually made some mm -hmm. video demonstrations of how he mm -hmm. uses the tools. I didn't have a chance to look at any, but uh, that's really cool. I think you know actually some some meat on that. Uh, on that bones so mm -hmm. other places it, you can just google tools i start out with seven ten another ten eighteen tools so just comic books and wow. things like that their comic books are are quite popular um now this one divided it out for websites for digital storytelling like the comic mm -hmm. creators and apps and apps, I, I used to use, my students in uh, UAE were using iPads. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. we used to do a lot of stuff with them with, with uh, try to get them to create digital stories in the apps. Mm -hmm. Like Show Me, for example. I don't know if you're familiar with that. No. Show Me is a tool where you can actually ask students to create digital stories, but it's also very good for explaining uh, what people should do because you can record on your iPad mm -hmm. uh, a process you're going through. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
anyhow, I like that site because it it uh, differentiated between apps and websites. And wow, a lot of these tools, yeah. So many of them. A lot of them are for, well, this one's for iOS and Chrome. Yeah, there's so many of them. I, I don't, I just took, I got, uh, there's 30 tools here. I just copy and pasted them here and said I did that. It was plagiarism, but you know, they, but I said I did it. So, okay, it's not really plagiarism. Mm -hmm. But basically, I just put it all there and mm -hmm. um, asked people to go to this discussion in Schoology. Oh, I'm familiar with VoiceThread. Voice Only thread, yes. Yes, off right. of this list. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, VoiceThread is a well-known, it's not, I wouldn't say it was a digital story. It's kind of a conversation thing. Maybe Flipgrid is yeah. it's kind of like Flipgrid. Have you used mm -hmm. Flipgrid? Nope. I haven't used it either. It seems to be quite popular. I don't know if it's listed mm -hmm. here, Flipgrid, anyway. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so many tools. It would be nice if people, if the 40 people here could... Uh, kind of come together and help each other, help help ourselves learn more about these tools. Mm -hmm. But back to what I really want people to do, I mean, I just threw all this together, but what I really want people to do is to create one, just create a digital story, you know, take whatever you see here and make one. Um, I'll try it myself over the next week. Mm -hmm. Try to learn something from all this. Mm -hmm. And there's more information, uh, this is about, uh, the tools for uh, what we did in week one, mm -hmm. which you're still struggling with. Not struggling, but <laughs> anyway, so there, there are links from Schoology and from here to uh, everything you need to know about the tools. Mm -hmm. This kind of goes back to the workshops I gave, but this one, this one is this page right here that we're looking at, the second one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if anybody has any questions or need help, you can look at the links right here, mm -hmm. or you can ask in the discussions in Schoology. Uh, here is the discussion where there, there's one discussion for any question. That's that one right there. Mm -hmm. just pop over there. Shall we just look at it? Let's just see what happens if we pop over to it. There's a discussion that says, what if you have a question? Okay. And as soon as it opens... You're also go going to show me your teach, right? Huh? You're your also teach. going to show me your teach. That right? was next in the list. Okay. Where, where was that? Here we go. Yes. So, attend one of the webinars or office hours, which you're doing right now. They're all listed yeah. here. You're, you, you know that, uh, kind of like I did with EVO Minecraft MOOC, I put yes. everything is, it's in the sidebar here. Mm -hmm. So, if you, your teach is next, don't worry, it's coming. Okay. Um, actually, we can go up to the sidebar and get Yo Teach because it's also one of the ways they can, they can people can ask. Uh, unfortunately, this video is right on top of what I'm looking. Okay, so there we go. So, um, what was I looking for? Where did I just come from? You're looking for Yo Teach oh. on the sidebar. No, I was looking up. No, Yo Teach is uh, yeah one up. But anyway, I was looking for the. Upcoming events and recordings archive, that one right there. Okay. So that one, if I pop to it, your teacher will come back because okay. all the sidebars are all the same. So this is, these are the uh, webinars we have coming up. Wow. They're all listed there, and the ones we've done already are archived. And as we do one, we're just doing that one right now. And then make a recording. I'll put the recording down in the archive, and pretty soon the archive will get very large, and the upcoming We'll get very small, but anyway. Very impressive. Right Yo teach. Here we go. There it is right there. It's in the sidebar. Uh, Yo teach looks like this. And you have to have a password. Do you remember the password? Blended. Right. Okay. So if you know the password blended, you just put it in there. And, oh, Yay. Noor. Noor wrote in Ooh. here. Okay. Yay. Yes. Okay. So Noor That's left great. me a, a thank you, Noor. Thank you. That's Noor Dean, by the way. Uh -huh. in Morocco. Uh -huh. Okay. So he's been actually he's been interacting all over with me. Uh -huh. uh, please, I'm looking for resources. Better go. Okay. She, oh, he's great. doing uh, uh, some kind of uh, he's got got a workshop himself on digital digital story. storytelling. So he that can just. Nice. 
use my materials. I can leave a note, say, use this stuff. Where is it? Week one. Oh, here it is. Week two, this is it. Yeah, so that would be the link he wants. So I can go to YoTeach and say, you're welcome to use anything you find here. Bing, there we go. So that's how it works. Unfortunately, okay. this, this doesn't, uh, it's not hyperlinked, but anyway, that's just okay. a flaw you can see with YoTeach. Uh -huh. So let me just put in a final word about, uh, about what I've got here. Mm -hmm. And this is the, the course. If you land on it, you come to the materials tab. The materials tab is always the default. It's not always the default. I can set it to where it could be updates. All the updates I've given are all listed here. I just click, clicked on it. So all the updates, if you click on updates, you'll come out to all the, anything I've updated is all here. So any, anything I had there before, you can always find it there. Uh, I don't know why you'd want to do that, but anyway, uh, the current updates are that Ajahn T and Sharon Graham have both, and soon, uh, Jane will <laughs> submit her. And when you when you submit yours, as I said to Sharon, please tweet your link on that tab. Oh, okay. Then we'll see, yeah, then we, then we can go to it and we'll all be happy because there'll be stuff there. Uh -huh. And so I told them that the uh, everything was set up on these two uh, pages that I've just been showing everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, meanwhile, just respond to the discussions under upcoming, which is here. This mm -hmm. is where we are right now. All mm -hmm. this stuff is due today, February 26th. So I think <gasps> we, I have one hour left to do. <laughs> oh, not really. You know, I could set it also if it bothered you. I could set it to the 27th, or you can always go under week one and you can find okay. here's week one right there. So you can always find the anything for week one here mm -hmm. but i was thinking to let those lapse unless if you want i can set them to for another day let me do that i'll set them for another day but i'd kind of like for them to lapse so we can forget about week one and we can go into week two uh -huh. uh, they're essentially okay. the same thing week one is just to get people to put something up to be thinking about the tools and put something online yes. Yes. get using Very the stuff get familiar with it and then week two is, okay, a little something a little bit more elaborate, focused on digital storytelling. Mm -hmm. Not because we want you to tell the digital story, but we want to, you to get more and more familiar with the tools. And the third thing is to actually set up some kind of blended learning environment. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that's where we're headed. Mm -hmm. And I plan to work with people closely if they need help. Um, I'm going to change the color of this to white tomorrow sometime, I suppose, and then we'll have, and maybe I'll even move it down below here, so we'll have creating a story and then creating a basic uh, DIY LMS, that's do-it-yourself learning management system. That means you use free tools to do what I'm doing, basically. And mm -hmm. I learned myself, having just started working with Schoology, that a really good way to work is to set up something in PBWorks or something in, a, it could be in Google Docs, uh, you could even do it in a WordPress blog, which is set up something that you want people to learn and put some graphics there. Mm -hmm. And then you go to Schoology and you put that in <clears throat> and set it up in a way that sets, that gives things assignments and gives them discussions so they can, mm -hmm. they can respond to things. So Schoology is good for people responding to things. Mm -hmm. PBWorks is for content. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can get your phone call. <laughs> no, that's the that's the clock. Oh, the clock that times you for the internet that you're using. So you've got no, to. No, it it goes by like hourly. They they have music by uh -huh. the hour. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, it's really nice that you came by and nice to talk to you. And is there anything else that you'd like to know? Or, um, oh, this is great. Um, I can get back. 
to working on my like week one assignment, but mm -hmm. also I'll think about just digital storytelling, um, familiar, get myself familiar with some of the tools that you've um, provided us on PB Works. And yep. Okay. Well, anyway, it's nice that you stopped by and I didn't have to just talk to myself. No, thank you so much for doing this. I'm learning um, a lot of the tools. It's a great chance to learn more. Well, yeah. thanks Bangkok Relo and uh, the U.S. State Department of all the things they do. They have this really one nice program which uh, maintains has maintained English language specialists for all these years. Do you have English language specialists in Taiwan, in Taipei? I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they they provide they fund people to uh, give workshops and mm -hmm. uh, this online thing. I mean, it's not highly remunerative, remunerative, but it is a great opportunity for people like myself who just want to learn more about uh, how to do this, so I can learn it and help other people to learn it as well. So that's my my uh that's how much fun i'm having right now oh it's great to be learning from you and um yeah with you. and with you yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you okay so cool okay so um i i'll be back here every other day that is not tomorrow but the next day and the two days after that until March 11th when all this dries up and I've got to start thinking about getting to Denver. Yeah. 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 And, and, and that's another story. Yep. <laughs> getting things organized there. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you Thanks. so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.